This podcast is sponsored by Magic Rock Brewing. Currently, you can get free delivery on all orders over £40 and 10% of all online orders by using our code of TakesThatChance10. Christopher Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. Down the left and Moy stayed onside. Here's Mounier. 2 0 on a field down on the opening day of the Premier League. One two wicket from Here's Moy right footed. 1 0 on a field down. Lindelof misses his header. De Poitras in. Round to Heya. 2 0 on a field down. 2 0 on a field down. Here's Sanka to turn it into the pass. Yes! Yeah. Tommins scored! <laughs> Tommins has scored! One of the most important goals of Huddersfield Town's history! De Plattras forward, De Plattras got the better yes! of <laughs> And Laurent De Plattras scores! Laurent De Plattras scores! And we are recording. Here we go. So we are stoking in the fire this week on the warm-up, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 15. Joining me, your host, Bray Frost, is the uh, man with the hottest analytics, Mr. Chris Markham. How are you, Chris? I'm very good, thank you, mate. How are you? Yeah, I think I'm good, mate. I think the intros are getting better as well. Yeah, do you know what, mate? You're, you're growing into this role. Yeah, you know, it's like you know, like a new signing, you know, but coming in, changing things, getting used to it. <laughs> Talking of new playing. signings. Yeah. Well, oh, look at this with this segue. You should be hosting, <laughs> mate. Joining us as a new signing is, uh, joining me and Chris, is uh, James Whitaker, the man who came to rescue uh, for Matt's quiz in, uh, you know, New Year quiz. And he's also yeah. going to provide some hot takes, I believe. How are you, James? Yeah, I'm not bad, thank you. Um, if you go onto the Twitter, you'll see a picture of me with the, the scarf um, and my number. And um, yeah, so yeah, happy to be at the club. Just want to settle in and... Good group of lads, etc. <laughs> nice. Fans it's are brilliant as always. Yeah. <laughs> Listeners are brilliant as always. Yeah. Listeners are class. We go again. Listeners anyway. are class. We'll go again. <laughs> anyway, gentlemen, um, I'll set the scene because I love to hear the sound of my own voice. Um, Stoke are nine from the table going into this game. Uh, but like Huddersfield, they are actually suffering a bit of bad form. So they're in the bottom five of the form table in the last six games, albeit. We are below them in the form table, we're actually 23rd in the form table, which is not good reading. And uh, Stoke have drawn five of the last five away games. Um, but that sounds boring. Tell you what wasn't boring. The previous game in November, which was a 4-3 defeat, uh, that was very entertaining and very frustrating in an equal measure. Um, our debut, the first pod, pre-match pod we ever did. It was, mate. And if only the games carried on like that in terms of all the goals. And the pods. <laughs> and the pots. All right, mate. God, pining for that. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the game. Um, so, James, what, what did you make of the, the 4 3 defeat back in November? Oh, I mean, uh, it was one of the most crazy games I've ever watched. Um, I think I'd probably say it was exciting in a bad way, if that's possible. Um, there were so many uh, defensive errors uh, from town. Uh, and then somehow we managed to get back into it with. Uh, some set piece, set piece goal from Navi Sar, and some actually quite good play going forward. Uh, good goal from Aitin. It was just one of those where Stoke had that high press with um, Tyrese Campbell and Stephen Fletcher, and it was just at that time. I think it was. I mean, we still are getting used to playing it out from the back, but we were definitely um, trying to hone it at that point, and they made it very difficult for us. Really, uh, we had the uh, Joel Pereira deputising in between the sticks and didn't have the greatest of debuts in the town shirt. Um, so, yeah, it was a really, really bizarre game, um, to be honest. Um, and hopefully we see something a little bit more controlled this time around. Yeah, no, I agree. Like you say, uh, that has been Pereira's only, only game of the season so far and he uh, lad didn't have a great one. Also uh, an own goal from Stearman. Wasn't who you know isn't available, but um, 
fortunately for Huddersfield fans, Tyrese Campbell, who caused us no end of problems in that match, is actually out for the season, so he won't be playing, so that's good to know. Um, yeah, no, it um, was, was a good game, um, if you're a neutral, but I, I think it was one of those where we were tearing our hair hair out watching it, to be honest. Um, but I'll come on to you, Chris, because you said you have some lovely, lovely data on uh, Stoke, because they've changed a lot. Yeah, not yeah. it's interesting, really. We're not data as such in terms of some of the stuff we normally cover. You're quite right that there is such a strange team since we last played them. Um, like you mentioned, they've had no wins in the last six, but they're unbeaten in the last eight away. So you can imagine there's a lot of draws in there, um, which is keeping them in touch at the top, even though they're obviously um, not picking up as many points in the last six. You know, we mentioned about how, how they might be and should be a playoff team really at this standard in, in the previous pod we did on them. Obviously, the, the, the issue we've got, I suppose, if they're stronger away is that we're stronger at home. You mentioned our form, obviously, we all know. We're bottom of the league now for the last eight away games, conceded more goals than any other team in our last eight away games. But we're third in the last eight home games. Obviously, we don't, I think it's all, uh, Watford and maybe Bournemouth or one of them above us. So, obviously, it was such a Jekyll and Hyde team, which is why we are where we are. Obviously, the away form is an absolute huge worry. If you're bottom of the league at anything, it's a worry, but particularly that we don't like changing anytime soon. Um, so, the home form is going to be vital. In terms of how town might end up preparing for this game, I mentioned we mentioned on the last pod thinking about Bristol City and how it's difficult when teams switch between a back three and a back four or certainly uh, switch between formations. And we mentioned the last pod on Stoke that they potentially have got a back three in their locker. They've gone back three in recent games, but then just to add a spanner in the works against Watford on Saturday, they went back to a back four. So again, it'll be another difficult one for town. They'll have to have a couple of options to prepare for, I'm sh and I'm sure that they will. The main thing that I suppose I'd, I'd like to sort of, it just seems really interesting. We spoke last time about um, Stoke. And like I say, it's not data as such, but we spoke about them being really experienced and really championship savvy. You know, they've got a huge wage budget, as we all know. Obviously, the likes of Klukas, your Allens, Fletcher, Powell, even, you know, the, 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 the Tommy Smiths of this world. They've got so much younger uh, since we played them. Most of those players I've just mentioned then have had spells on the bench recently, if not been on the bench permanently. So the amount of money that they've got on the bench is incredible. They've, they've like I said, they, they seem to have brought a lot of younger lads in. They brought Jack Clark from uh, Tottenham on loan, obviously former Leeds. Uh, a young uh, Welsh winger who was at Schalke, uh, anyone who kept track, uh, kept track of Wagner and, and Christoph out there. Uh, a young Welsh lad called Rabbi Matondo. So they've added real pace on the wings. They've played the young lad in Nets who was in the England setup, uh, uh, Joseph Bursic. Um, they've also added uh, Oakley, uh, Tash and Oakley Booth on law. Or, or, uh, sorry, they've had Tash and Oakley Booth. And they've brought in uh, um, the, a midfielder, Thompson. They've got Norrington Davies, who's playing at fullback. And they've also got Collins, who, and all of these players are less than uh, you know 22. So they've really got young. I don't know whether that's due to um, the energy levels that the manager wants to play with. I don't know whether it's just to shake things up because of the bad run of form. But I think it's really interesting when you look at this squad. We thought last time the big strength was that their experience at this level. Seems like he's sort of gone away from that a bit. I don't know what, what you guys think about that. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting. I was going to, um, I was chatting to, to Ben, who we'll hear from later for a Stoke fan. And um Norrington Davis seems to be kind of the key, the key acquisition from them switching back to a back four because it, it seems like they didn't have any, any left backs. But also um, a player I really like, Nathan Collins, who's um, been linked with uh, I think Arsenal in this window. Um, he's, you know, a big guy, but he's been playing right back and doing quite a good job. Only nineteen, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. No, he's. Um, I think he's definitely the one for the for the Premier League. You know, sooner rather than later, and uh, he's put in some good performances. And uh, he's actually keeping Tommy Smith out out of the side at the moment. But yeah. it's interesting, like you say, Chris. They, you know, I'm just looking at their bench from the Watford game, and you know, you talk about how they've added Matondo and, and Jack Clark, which they were crying out for wingers, is what uh, Ben was saying. But the experience they've got on the bench, like Stephen Fletcher, you know, who we know can do a job at this level, Danny Bat. You know Sam Vokes Angus and um, yeah Jacob Brown, a guy a guy I really like who they signed from Barnsley. So again, I know they've they're in a bit of a stronger financial position than us, but you know a great championship squad. Mate, so. you're not going to be in a strong financial position for long if you keep all them on the bench. There must be. I bet their bench is nearly 
or maybe as much as our wage bill? Oh, easily, easily. I mean, the thing is, we don't, you know, <laughs> we don't own a betting company that can bankroll the team, but, you know, that's a separate point. Um, James, what about yourself? Is there any kind of, I suppose we'll come on to key players um, for Stoke. Is there anyone you like from the Stoke, Stoke team or any, any comments about the side in general? Well, just leading on from that, really, I was just, um, like you were saying, Chris, I think, to be honest, it might be one of them a bit like Derby and a bit like Wednesday that they'll probably have to really start pushing for the Premier League soon. Otherwise, they might start to be caught up with a little bit from a financial fair play point of view. And, you know, I know they're owned by a fairly notable betting company. We don't want to give any kind of platform to but um, Other betting companies are available. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, they've got like a ridiculous level of um, depth on the bench. Um you mentioned Rabi Matondo there. I mean, we did. Um, I know me and Brady were watching Schalke a bit when there was no English football, and I thought he was really impressive in quite a terrible Schalke side at the time, uh, obviously managed by Wagner. Um, he had a bit of pace, and um, I'd be quite a little bit worried, um, you know, with Saar and Stearman um, going up against him, to be honest. Um, but yeah, and, and again, they've got Fletch to come back from injury. Um, I don't want to go into all the key players just yet, but uh, yeah, obviously, like you say, he's very proven at this level. Pick one, mate. Pick one. Is it? Is it Matondo? Go on. I'll go for Matondo. Uh, I'll just I'll, I'll I'll stick with him. I think that he's. I think they've done. It's a bit of a coup to get him in at this level. To be honest, yes, I, agree. Uh, I thought he was. Uh, I thought he was excellent for Schalke. Uh, looked really good. Um, looked like the best player for them in the uh, the derby against Dortmund. So. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I think Keogh and Saar could end up having a few nightmares against him if he gets on, because I think he's not quite fully fit. But I imagine he'll, he'll definitely be brought off the bench, um, if not starting. Definitely. Chris, what about yourself for, for key player? It's a difficult one, because they have changed the team as well as going younger. They have been quite flexible, really, in the team selection. I think Klukas, I think, I don't know if I mentioned him last time, it might have been my pick even, but um, Klukas was just coming back when we played him last. He's so versatile, obviously, with his left foot, can play as a 10, can play as an 8, can play 11, wide wide left, probably even play wide right or up front if you wanted him to. Um, so I think his, his versatility, his energy, and I just think he's a really good operator at this level and he gives the manager so many options to probably change formation within game. And, you know, I think he's someone who, you know, I, I, I remember coming up against him when, uh, obviously with Town in, uh, in, in, in previous years when he was um, at Chesterfield. Um, and, you know, you always thought he's, in, he's going to be interesting. Obviously went on to Hull and Swansea to sort of really make a name for himself. So, I think he just gives a manager and a team so much, um, I don't know, flexibility. And I think that's something you can really value in the championship. Definitely. I, and he's one of those players that's played at every level. And, you know, like I said, yeah. great, great player. I think any side would have him, you know, just for, for what he gives. Definitely um, in the championship. Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I've actually gone for um, for Nick Powell. Um, so he's, I think he's, he's another player I'm really impressed with. Again, one of those... Um, players from Man United who was hyped to very young and didn't quite work out, but he he is a, a fantastic player at this level. Um, he's got seven goals this season as well. He's been filling in for some of the strikers. Obviously, he can play a striker, but he's been playing kind of more of a number ten role sometimes. But I, the reason I picked him because he really stood out to me um, in the previous game when we played them because he was on Jonathan Hawk all the time and you know was frustrating mm. him and pressing him high. And I, I thought from you know. Obviously, I was tearing my hair out at Stephen's own goal in Pereira, but sometimes you have to say um, fair play for the game plan. And I thought he executed it uh, fantastically, to be honest. So, yeah, I think <laughs> I think they're not short of um, players who can hurt us um, for, by the sounds of it. But we'll come on to to key players for Town. Um, I'll, I'll go to I'll I'll start off actually just just where we'll go in reverse order. But I've actually gone for Vallejo um, because. I still is it just you like saying Vallejo? I think it is, mate. Yeah, no. Well, actually, to be honest, I can tell that. To be honest, um, like with Bakuna, I kept picking Bakuna, and he seems to be uh, doing, uh, being a bit better. Obviously, got the goal in midweek, so um, I'm hoping this is the same thing. And you know, it's a bit of luck, but um, he was at he was at fault for the arguably for the first goal uh, in midweek, but he's still getting up to speed in the championship, but. I think he's actually, what surprised me, he's actually quite good at playing the ball forward. Um, you know, we were talked about his defensive capabilities, but it's been quite good there. And I just, I think given how many goals we've conceded and, you know, 
we were the worst. We've conceded the most goals in the division. I think he needs to have a good game for us to get something out of it. So this is more of a kind of I hope he does well. Um, and I think he could he could be key. Um, Chris, we'll, we'll, what about yourself? Yeah, um, I've gone for a, um, I don't know, it, it, it was a tricky one, this one, because obviously all sorts of things could happen. I've gone for uh, Rolando Aarons because I think you look at obviously the, after uh, obviously Campbell's high profile misses, but we've been singing the praises of Campbell for his good form, for his works. And I think looking back at my notes, interestingly, from the first pod we did on Stoke, and I met, I was speaking about Fraser Campbell and what he offers to the team out of possession, which is really important for a manager like Corbran. I think it's difficult, but you've got to try and give Campbell the time and the benefit of the doubt. He still does a good job for the team. And, of course, we need him to score those goals. He'll be upset as anyone. But we need support from him from goals from elsewhere, like, crucial. And, obviously, when you play 4-3-3 or a 3-4-3, you need those wingers to contribute. They have to contribute. You know, look at the top teams. The wingers score as many as the strikers. Um, And, obviously, I think, obviously, in Benza seems to be more of a creator. Uh, in his role, obviously, so most of his goals come from set pieces for us. And Aaron, I think he needs to be, Aaron's needs to be someone who who, who starts to contribute. And I think if he start, he needs to start sooner rather than later, really. Yeah, uh, great, uh, great run for what created the goal for Bristol as well, actually. Um, been quite yeah. impressed with Aaron's. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And that's what I mean, get a goal, he could be flying. Absolutely. Um, James, what what about yourself? Who, who do you think is the key player for town? Well, I nearly went for uh, Aaron's, to be honest, but I... Um, we'll go for Naby Sarr basically because I think when Sarr plays well I think Town play well and I think quite a lot will hint, hinges on him to be honest to be honest he's quite we've seen he's quite prone to defensive mistakes so if he can sort of try and keep them to a minimum uh, then that obviously massively helps the team I think going back to what, a little bit what you're saying Chris I think sometimes the defence has actually put a little bit of a little bit too much pressure on our attacking players this year by uh, giving away stupid goals, really, particularly the playing out from the back, which we saw was pretty awful against Stoke in the previous fixture. So I think it's really important that we are playing out well against their high press. Uh, well, presumably they'll go for a high press again since it was pretty effective last time. Um, so it's really important that the, we're playing it out well. Uh, the other thing is Sars actually third joint top scorer for town uh, <laughs> threat from set pieces and in the reverse fixture he was a little bit of a hero and a villain for town to be honest with that goal from from a set it pretty much sums him up doesn't it usually it's yeah, game basically. to game but in that game it was within the game yeah exactly and I think that kind of probably sums up sums up where we are uh, yeah. a little bit as well he sort of represents in a little bit of a microcosm where Huddersfield town now will will look very solid at the back and and, and look dangerous going forward one game and then other games, Opposite. you know, it, it all kind of goes to pieces a little bit. So hopefully, yeah, he's he's my key. If he plays well, I think that Town um, will definitely get something from the game. We're giving ourselves the best chance to. And um, nice. yeah, maybe he'll, he'll score from a corner or, or, or a free kick or something like that. Here's hoping, mate. I think that's spot on. Uh, nice little microcosm there of, of the Town team yeah, at the moment. excellent word, mate. <laughs> what what a debut! What a debut! Um, no, so, <laughs> all right, Chris, don't kiss his ass too much. Um, well, at least it's good to have some quality on, and I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about us both, mate. All right, okay. Well, well. Anyway, come on, come on. So we're going to go to return to the Mac. Uh, still need Matt to sort out that theme tune. So Matt, if you are listening, you know that would be appreciated. I, I hope he's listening because he's editing. Well, he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. Sorry, right? I've let everyone behind the curtain. I've let everyone behind the curtain. The secrets, um, the secrets of podcasting. So, James, I'll, I'll come to you. We'll go in reverse order because um, you are the guest, and we'll, we'll let the guest get first pick. Uh, so, which former town player would you bring back to this game, and why? Right. So, um, I've gone for uh, Danny Schofield. Now, Ooh. obviously, he's on the bench at the moment. <laughs> uh, so, you know. There is, he's there, he's an option. Not sure if he's fully match fit or not, but there we are. Um, now, I didn't play at the highest level for town, uh, but I remember when I first started watching town, he was my one of my favourite players. Very mm-hmm. exciting, would run at players, but he'd also be up for a little bit of a scrap as well, as a few town fans will remember, um, if it does come down to it, which obviously you do need in the Football League. And I think you do need a little bit of that against Stoke. Um, I think that if he did decide to... Uh, play on play on the wing for us against Stoke, then it'd probably 
um, have a bit of a little bit of a run of some of their defenders and hopefully create some opportunities for um, for Campbell and let's see if he can put them away. So yeah, that's what I've gone with. Nice, I like it, Matt. Strong choice. What about yourself, Chris? Well, I'll quickly introduce Matt first. Um, oh, nice. We've yeah. To Matt, um, you know the, the, the mysterious Matt. Um, in this he's one, it? gone. He has really thrown a car amongst the pigeons um, here, and he's gone way back, um, way, way, way back. Uh, his rationale is he thinks we need a talisman up top, and sometimes you need a player who can create and do something from nothing, which I completely agree with. I think I've mentioned it before on here. And he's gone for Frank Worthington. Now, obviously, Frank Worthington is one of town's best ever players, so he's gone back to that uh, era. Um, and obviously someone who could create and score out of nothing. You look at his goals on YouTube and, you know, any one of the, the, the listeners who have seen him play, like, what, I mean, what a choice uh, to pick. So I'm going to take a leaf out of his book and I'm thinking, you know what, I'm not letting him get away with choosing probably the club's best ever player maybe to play and we're struggling at the minute. So I'm going to absolutely, I'm going to match him. I'm not going to let him get away with this pole snatching. Um, so I'm going to go for probably... If you wanted to say a name that's played for the club, who's probably the biggest ever name, if you asked all town fans, they'd probably all say this guy. And I think we've just spoke about Fraser Campbell. We are a team that does create chances and they tend to come in, you know, quite quickly one after the other. You go a game where you don't look like scoring and you should score six. Um, and hopefully if that's one of those games at home this weekend, we would love, I know we all would love, um, to have Dennis Law on the end of it. I mean, obviously we sold him, paid for the floodlights at Leeds Road. But, I mean, if there's players, you're talking Frank Worthington and Dennis Law, probably the top two players that have ever played for the club in terms of their career after that, and maybe along with, uh, with obviously, the certain World Cup winner who, who we had, obviously, with Ray Wilson. But I think in, in terms of that, I just thought I can't let him... I was keeping Dennis Law, I was just going to see who goes there first. But if Matt wants to play like that, then uh, I'm going to throw my Dennis Law card down. Law and order Ready? from you there, Chris. No, uh, mm. that's a, they're good shouts. I mean, to be honest, I, I've done the opposite of what I normally do, and it's normally what Matt curses me for. But I've actually picked a player that I I was thought was decent at town, and I think we actually do need for this game. Um, James will like this one because we we talk about him quite a bit. Um, again, more famous for playing for Leeds than us, but I've actually gone for Jermaine Beckford because oh, he got nice. eight goals in 21, 21 appearances for us, and he saved us that season. You know, yeah, when he joined on loan. Um, and you know, obviously we're we're a preview podcast, but you know, poor poor lad Campbell uh, missed a couple, and I, I'm pretty sure if Beckford was on the end of one of them, they would have been in the net. So yeah, I've gone for Jermaine Beckford. Um, yeah, great. Like I say, Do you know what as well with Bex, he was he was he, he come obviously with how he looks, and obviously with his neck tat and that, and with his personality, think oh what a what a dick. But you know what? Maybe one of the nicest lads that ever I worked with at Uddersfield. A genuinely nice man. And I think that comes across really well on his media work, which I'm really pleased for, because I think maybe what he was portrayed at and he could have a little bit of a feisty side to him. But yeah, he was really great, really great person. But oh, I mean, obviously, what a finisher. Mm -hmm. um, and like you say, that season um, kept us up, uh, which was, you know, which was obviously got a bit squeaky near the end there. So yeah, good, good choices, good choices. These are all solid choices. And I agree, Chris, he is a good pundit, actually. Fair play to mm. him. Um, but anyway, I'll tell you who is a nice bloke. Um, ben, he was on our first uh, warm-up. Uh, so Ben from the YY Files. And I had a little chat with him before we recorded this. And here's what he had to say. And we're ready. Right, I'm now joined on the line by Ben from the YYY Files. Uh, ben, how are you doing, mate? I'm, I'm good, mate. Thank you, yeah. Um, in a bit of a different place to where we were last time, I think. But yeah, still good, still hanging on in there. I'm, I'm sure you all, all are as well, listening. Yeah, definitely. And it's, um, it's good to have you back because, uh, as we were saying off air, you were the first guest we ever had on this new podcast. So uh, yeah, yeah. A bit of history for you. And and uh, and actually, I think we were just saying it was a good game to kick off with as well. I think in the end. Yeah, definitely. And in fact, we'll just go on to that. I mean, you know, four, four, three. Uh, victory for you guys I think there was uh, a game that had everything um, what did you make of it when we, we played each other it seemed to have been the typical Michael O'Neill performance that went well so we didn't have a lot of possession in that game um, we seemed to have took our chances in that game which is actually reasonably unlike us 
of late um we we had Tyrus Campbell there and um I expect nothing less of him than to score two goals in a game when when he was fit unfortunately this is a problem he's injured now um we we were flying at that point we were really really making a push for playoffs um and and I think we showed that in that game a lot of confidence we were still in the uh the league cup as well and like I say, it, it just sort of typified what Stoke were at the time. It, it wasn't long after that Campbell got injured and we've just gone downhill since. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. I mean, what I will say is we gave you some absolute um, sitters for your, your bad keeper error. But, yes, you know, this that's is just true. me. This is true. This is, this is, I've just got to get that in for our listeners. Um, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, it was it was quite interesting because um, obviously I, I kind of thought you'd do well this season and I was surprised to see um, in prep for this, you're you struggling a little bit. Um, so what's what's gone on really and how is, how is Michael O'Neill still doing? So we, I can't remember if this happened. I'm sure this happened by the time we played you. I'm, I'm sure Bursic was in goal then. Uh, we, we had a massive goalkeeping crisis. Um, so... We we had Adam Davis out. We had Angus gone out. We had um, Nicky Mayampa who we signed out. We had Andy Lonergan out with flu. We had um, uh, Porter, I think. Um, one of our youth goalkeepers got injured. We had to recall Bursic from Doncaster. Um, he's still in goal now. He's doing incredibly well after a bit of a shaky start, let, letting in a few goals in his first couple of games. Um, but the team as a whole has gone a bit downhill because of the loss of Tyrese Campbell. He scored two goals against you guys in a reverse fixture. And that seems to have been an excuse for us to absolutely capitulate. We've we've lost Stephen Fletcher in and out to injury too. He's that that's not helped. Um we are getting the likes of Joe Allen, Sam Clucas, John Ivan McKell back from injury as well. So it's just a case of bleeding those guys in. They've not performed particularly well, but these are guys that we need to start playing if they're going to be, you know, top players for us again. So we can't just leave them on the bench because they're not performing particularly well now. Um, and we're 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 a Stoke team in transition. We've made a lot of signings as well. Um, our our wingers haven't been particularly exciting in a system which you know O'Neill really wants his wingers. Tyrese Campbell was doing so well on the wing when he was fit. Now we've got um, Matondo. Ravi Matondo on loan from Schalke. He's not quite found the form yet. He's only been here for four games or so, but he's not hit the ground running. Uh, Jack Clark looks all right on loan from Tottenham, but again, he he's only had the one start. Um, Norrington Davis, Reese Norrington Davis, who got recalled from Luton to come to us from Sheffield United. He's been really good at left back. Um, he's he stopped us from having to play this three five two, which is why. As you say, we we've had this bad run of form, and it's because our our only left back, uh, Morgan Fox, got injured, and, and and basically throughout December we were playing this three five two, which didn't suit anybody, any of the players that we had in our team, and we just got picked apart by stupid stuff, and we weren't scoring goals either. Um, I'm I'm hoping we can start turning that around, and now that we've got people back fit and firing, I'm wondering whether we might take out a bit of our anger on you guys again. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, I was, uh, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I'm not, I'm not really looking forward to this game um, because we were in bad form, and I feel like even though you guys aren't in, in great form, we've, we seem to be really struggling. So, I suppose enough about what I think. What are you kind of thinking of the match? What are you kind of expecting from it on Saturday? I can only really say from a Stoke perspective because it's so hard to keep on top of how teams are doing in this championship season. Like I could, I could lie and say like, oh, I, I thought Huddersfield would be around like where they are this season now. But, but to be honest, as I say, that there's so many games and it changes so quickly, and teams are getting results which you wouldn't even expect. Look at Derby picking up these random wins and 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 the season they're having. Um, from a Stoke point of view, I I expect us to be better. I don't expect us to be particularly good because as I say we're still that team in transition but I expect us to be better than we have been not quite at the level that we were in the reverse fixture against you guys but I'm hoping um, another week of training for the new wingers that we've signed um, another week in the legs of Joe and Sam Lucas will really help um, Stephen Fletcher is back from injury he's, he's scored after coming on as a substitute in the last game uh, we really missed him against Watford um, and 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 the last time 
out we were playing Watford and we only got picked apart by a penalty and a really good finish from Ismail Asar. Apart from that, we looked half decent in defence. So defence, I'm not too worried about. If anything, I'm, I'm half tempted to go for a clean sheet for Stoke. Going forward is going to be the, the one where I'm like, we're just going to have to wait and see. Well, it'll be it'll be interesting, like I said, because obviously the last game was was incredibly entertaining. But from the sounds <laughs> of it, you think it's not going to be be so much. So we always kind of ask for a score prediction. So what, how what do you think for Saturday? I see everything. Everything points to something like a nil nil draw. You know, like Stoke have been defending very very well again this season. On the whole, um, up front we've not been great. And teams have sort of moulded in around that. So you'll have seen a lot of binary scores in our recent form. So 1-0, 0-0, 1-1, something around there. The odd sort of 3-0 loss very here and there throughout the season. But then we are playing you guys. And this, we, 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 between us, we seem to have these amazingly high scoring games one way or another. So I'm going to go with... 3-3 three, three draw, just because why not? <laughs> oh, interesting. Well, I mean, we did have um, 26 shots against Bristol in midweek and only scored Ooh. one. So, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it could be. I, I will take that. I would take a free all draw. Uh, just we haven't got any points this uh, to 2021 yet. So I would I would snap your hand off for that, Ben. Oh, wow. Um, but- yeah. <laughs> lovely but we will uh we'll see how we get on anyway but um yeah thanks so much again ben and um yeah best of luck for the rest of the season after after saturday as i always say <laughs> yes of course yeah same for you guys best of luck for the rest of the season um and and hopefully the next time we play each other it'll be back in the stadium oh here's hoping mate here's hoping i'm, I'm crying <laughs> out for it all anyway, right take care man <laughs> and you all right so we've heard from ben uh and now we'll move on to hearing from us in terms of uh us being the coach so Chris I'll come to you uh, I'd like to mix it up a little bit um who what lineup are you going for or what do you think is going to be gonna again the there's not much you look at the bench and there's just not much to change it obviously Dwayne potentially comes in uh I, I wasn't on the pod where we spoke about him and I've seen your piece Brady it was really good I think Dwayne's a really good asset to this I mentioned on the last pod particularly playing as an eight in this his best position is playing in my opinion he's playing as an eight uh one of the more advanced central midfielders in a 4-3-3 where you've got a holder behind him mm-hmm. he can receive in between the lines he can dribble and take people out of the game and you know what he is a bit of a game changer like Matt described that, 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 that we're after um so I would probably try and find a way to get him in uh, and then other than that, I think it picks itself, to be honest, uh, at the minute. You know, the, the only issue, you could, I think with Vallejo in terms of now you've no Iting and Hoggy at the minute, I think Vallejo is the only option as that deep midfielder. Um, so I think he stays. And then it's just a case of obviously O'Brien and Bakuna. Uh, obviously, uh, Bakuna scored on, uh, on, on Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever day it was. Um, so obviously it's it, it's an interesting one for him. Uh, he's probably not going to get dropped, O'Brien. So maybe they just keep the same team, even though it was a loss. Um, I think Aaron's and Benz are the best two wingers. Campbell's still the best striker. I just don't look at the bench and think, oh, beg beg to change it. Um, so probably a bit boring, really. I think if Dwayne might be the only interesting one, but I'm never, you know me, lads. I'm never going to drop O'Brien and back, uh, Bakuna scored the last game, so. No, I agree, mate. I think that's a good shout. James, what about yourself? I, I kind of agree with Chris, really. Picks picks itself. Uh, basically, yeah. Yeah, a little bit boring. Again, I've gone for exactly the same. Uh, I did, did did occur to me just, um, yeah, what, what you'd do, whether you would put home straight in. Uh, from my point of view, yeah, I think I agree with what Chris has said. Bakuna scored. I thought he was better second half. So, uh, as much as it sort of pains me a bit, because I think he's been very straight, and then you've kind of got to, Got to reward him for that. Um, I do wonder if he has sort of upped his game a little bit since Holmes was sort of on the horizon, to be honest, because uh, mm-hmm. I think we are lacking competition in in, in quite a few key areas. In every um, area, I'd suggest. Every, every area possible. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I think that you've, you've got to, yeah, basically has to keep the same team unless that there's some, some people have miraculously come back available from injury or, you know, um, yeah. When so Law and, and Frank decide to put their boots on. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I mean, I take it. I bet yeah. 100%. I, 
Uh, again, lads, I think for me, same same lineup really. I think what will be interesting is because I don't expect Corveran to chuck Holmes in straight away. Um, although, again, I think you could probably make a case for it. So I expect him on the bench. And I know we the bench has been criticised recently, but I'm starting to think there is a couple of options. I, you know, I was I thought what was quite interesting was he brought on Kieran, Kieran Phillips a bit earlier than he normally does. It still was the last 10 minutes, but um, and he brought on Pritchard. And I think if we have Pritchard, Phillips um, and Holmes on the bench, I think we could potentially change it a little bit. Um, and also it was interesting to see T- Sober Thomas on the bench as well. Yeah. Um, didn't come on, but I think he got uh, two assists in his first game for the, for the Young Terriers. So we have got people, again, yeah, I think it's getting to the point where we're not worried just yet, but obviously we're, we're on a bit of a bad run. And I do think like maybe we need to look to the bench and chuck some people on to kind of change it up, especially, I mean, you know, I, I hope Campbell scores, but I wonder if this is a good game for Phillips because again, not not a lot to lose really. So um, yeah, I agree with you for the lineup, and but I do think the bench could be quite interesting and maybe be a bit of a difference maker. Anyway, we'll come on to score predictions. I'll I'll just go quickly with this. I think Stoke have drawn a lot of games. Um, like we say, last last five away games they've all drawn, and I, I think we'll take that to be honest. And, you know, so I'm going to go for a one-one. I think they keep it quite tight, apart from the Rotherham game where they drew three all. But yeah, I think one-one, and uh, I think that'd be good first point of the year. Um, James, what about yourself in terms of score prediction? I was going to go for one all, so I will change it and go for two-one Town. Oh, well, okay. I'm not sure I can well, believe I'm saying that, but. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, ho- hopefully we can, um, you know, the second half at Bristol City, maybe we can sort of bring that forward. Yeah, that momentum. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with 1-1. One, one. You've said it already, uh, Brady, but I, I think, I just think it's going to be a tight game, two teams not in form, um, but Stoke hard to beat, um, obviously. The only thing that I think could potentially, you know, like like um, like we've mentioned there, and like James has just said, in terms of that momentum we pick up from that attacking impetus from the second half of the game on 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 um, Wednesday, was it? I still don't remember. Um, Tuesday, um, I think um, would be really could be the only thing that probably gives us that impetus to carry on this home form because let's have it right the home form at the minute is what we're relying on and mm. we don't want to get too desperate because obviously that's where they'll pick us off and exploit us because uh, they are a good side out of possession but I think it's um, yeah I've, I've just got a feeling it's going to be a 1-1 and that probably gives us then a week there's no midweek game so it gives us a week to to prepare for obviously what are two winnable games after this so I think they probably would take a draw yeah, I think uh, I think that's good reasoning. But yeah, like we say, well, let's hope for a town win. Uh, I think it would be coming at a really handy time. So we will see on Tuesday. But um, yeah, cheers for coming on, uh, Chris and James, and uh, cheers to everyone for listening. And uh, yeah, see you for the next one. Oh, what a night! Late in May in twenty seventeen, Shinder scored. It was a heavy. What a feeling, what a night Oh, what a night Wagner singing, we are Premier League The greatest sight in Georgia Square did see What an evening, what a night Got a funny feeling when he walks and a fence and then the commentator yelled he takes that chance Oh what a night Lost so safe and mesmerizing me Low, low charge and flattened all Chelsea Stanford Bridge, oh what a night Oh I, I got a funny feeling when he walks And a fence and then The commentator
Så gör ditt tingsatt tjänst